Roberto De Zerbi might be the most innovative manager in the Premier League. He has not only proved Johan Cruyff himself wrong, but also made a big change in Pep Guardiola and Mikel Arteta's tactical approach. We'll take you through why his high-performing tactic has made a big and maybe everlasting change to Premier League defenses. And also how he has inspired the big clubs in England, like Man City and Arsenal. Of course, when we dare to say that Cruyff was wrong about something, we'll have to prove that thoroughly. Stick around for that part later in the video. When Graham Potter left Brighton for Chelsea and the Seagulls appointed Roberto De Zerbi, pundit Green Sunis suggested in an interview with TalkSport that the club had taken a huge risk. It's quite normal for British pundits to prefer British managers, and like Sunis did, claim that managers like De Zerbi doesn't know our game. We've recently covered how all the major tactical innovations in the Premier League have come from managers outside of England, and why British managers are falling behind. So check out that video in the description. The problem with Sunis' opinion, however, is that he didn't understand the reason for Tony Bloom hiring the Italian manager in the first place. For those of you that knew about the Zerbi before he came to England, we're sure you're thinking I told you so by now. If you're not familiar with how he sets up his teams, don't worry, we'll take you through it. Roberto De Zerbi has, for years, been a positional style manager with an extreme approach in clubs like Sassuolo and Shakhtar. And why do we call his approach extreme? We've seen his players walk slowly or standing with their studs on the ball, waiting for the opponent to press them. He has also created interesting positional choices, like playing without a striker and used 2-3 players central between the lines. In other words, not something you see in English football every day. Therefore, fans were excited to see how the Italian was going to implement his style at Brighton. Looking back, Brighton have gone from good under Potter to great under De Zerbi. Even though both of them might be seen as positional play managers, there are some differences worth noticing. Potter's Brighton were flexible in how they would approach oppositions, while De Zerbi has made the opposing teams consider how they will line up to stop the Seagulls. We saw some signs of this in the FA Cup semi-finals against Manchester United. Firstly, the Zerbi's team lines up in a 4-2-3-1 on paper, but their build-up structure has looked a little different to this classic formation. Not only has the use of a double pivot system with Caicedo and Gross made a box structure together with central defenders, but Brighton has also made a second box with the positioning of McAllister and Welbeck. The reason that the Zerbi prefers this short distance between the central players is so that they can draw out the opposition to press them when they have the ball. Jump press to be more precise. In other words, the opposition leaves their original position to press the ball, leaving more open space behind them. This is the space the Zerbi wants to make use of, and the bigger they can manipulate the space, the better it is. This is why many of Brighton's attack feel like a counterattack. It's easy to paint the picture of a situation like this, with a big space to exploit for your team. But the fact is that no team gets in these situations as often as Brighton does. And when you consider the budget they work with, compared to the big clubs, it's even more astonishing. So, how can De Zerbi get this tactic to work so well when the Premier League clubs knows about his intentions? The devil is in the details. Brighton leaves nothing to coincidence when it comes to structure. They will always have a numerical overload between the first and second line of pressure. Here, we see Brighton build out from the back with the goalkeeper involved. As we can see, they have four players positioned between the first and second red line of pressure. Both the two pivots and the two fullbacks are placed on a height which will make the ball go past the first line if they're going to be used. This creates the first of many dilemmas for Brighton's opposition. Should they press the ball or cover the passing lanes? This is the key for De Zerbi. Whenever the ball is pressed, the ball carrier will have 2-3 to three passing options that are difficult to defend for the opposition. Because if the first line of pressure jumps up, how will the second line react when Brighton's 2 pivot moves closer along with the pressure? The result is a huge green area where De Zerbi wants to arrive with control. For the central defenders, it's a long way to follow the dropping attacker all the way. It feels risky. With this approach, one would think it's so easy to make a fatal mistake with the ball. But the Zerbi's teams rarely make these kinds of mistakes, and when they lose the ball, their structure often ensures that they're able to counterpress quickly with good balance in the team. For De Zerbi, it all comes down to technical superiority. The way they play, De Zerbi makes sure that his team are able to control the ball with both feet, 
use different passing techniques, and play the ball at the exact right moment. If you look closely at players like Caicedo and McAllister, you'll quickly realize that they always have the perfect body angle. They are always aware of their surroundings, and they use both feet to navigate themselves out of trouble. After all, Brighton wants to attract the opposition real close to them so that they can exploit the space they leave behind. In other words, the demands for these kinds of skills are non-negotiable for Deserbi. One of Brighton's veteran players, Adam Lalana, was blown away with Roberto Deserbi. Having worked with some of the big tacticians in the past, such as Jurgen Klopp, Lalana said in an interview that Deserbi was the most hands-on coach he had ever worked with on the training pitch. Not only does he orchestrate the fine details in what he wants, but he sometimes even becomes the playmaker, center back, or goalkeeper to show exactly what he wants. And Deserbi explained and gave some insight to this in a press conference. I don't move my players with a joystick. I give them instructions during the week in the training sessions, but during the game, they have to decide the solution. He believes that if he wants his players to take responsibility and find the best solutions, he has to give them the possibility to make mistakes. He wanted to decide everything, he would have removed their personality. If you give players the right tools, they'll be able to solve the situations. Already in Deserbi's first match back in October 2022, you could easily see that he had changed a lot in a few weeks of training. Even if the opponent was Liverpool at Anfield, Brighton dominated the game. Many of his players have excelled with him as manager, such as Matoma, McAllister, Solly March, Caicedo, Gross, Lewis Dunk, Colwell, the list just goes on. And a lot of big teams have struggled big time with Brighton after Deserbi's debut. Even though the Seagulls didn't win in his first five matches, they dominated a lot of the games against strong opponents, such as Liverpool, Spurs, Manchester City, and Brentford away from home. But when Brighton smashed Chelsea 4-1 at Amex Stadium, the start of a great run of results and performances started. Except for a loss to league leaders Arsenal, the Seagulls didn't lose a game between October and February. Both Pep Guardiola and Mikel Arteta have been inspired by De Zerbi's double pivot system. Two pivots was traditionally not usual at all in positional teams. Johan Cruyff claimed that the two players could get in each other's way and also be covered by one single opponent player. If that was the case, it would cause problems with progressing the ball in central areas, forcing the ball out to the wide fullbacks, which is not ideal for positional teams, as they are limited with space and options close to the sideline. However, a lot changed from Cruyff's time until now. Both the back pass rule in 1992 and the modification of the goal kick rule in 2019 led to teams needing more players in the central zone during build-up. Most teams press high and use man marking in a high press. A central box is suddenly more normal, also in more positional teams. Teams started to set up their tactics to limit Brighton's way of playing. In an exciting 2-2 draw against Leicester at King Power Stadium, it was clear that Brendan Rodgers' team was set up for one purpose to neutralize Brighton's way of playing. Leicester lined up to deny Brighton a combination between the two central pivots, while at the same time blocking the line between center backs and their two number 10s. This caused problems, which made Deserbi trying out a couple of different shapes during the match. Quite often, Brighton changed to a 2-3-5 structure, with the fullbacks going inside to form a three-man line together with Caicedo. Recently, when Manchester United and Brighton met in the FA Cup semi-final at Wembley, Eric Ten Hag presented an innovative and interesting counterplay to the Zerbi strategy. On paper, both teams lined up in a 4-2-3-1 formation. However, it was clear that Brighton was going to keep possession of the ball for most of the time, 61% to be precise. The Seagulls lined up in their 4-box-2 structure as normal, but the surprising element was United's defensive structure. United pressed in a 4-1-4-1 structure, but with Casemiro man-marking and CISO, this is not a usual move, and it did leave Welbeck to be the free player. So Ten Hag decided to let Shaw step out of the defensive line to mark Welbeck, meaning United would line up in a 3-2-4-1 structure. United also got rewarded for their innovative structure, managing to regain possession within a 40-meter radius of Brighton's goal 10 times, the highest number among all of Brighton's opponents this season in all competitions. Even if Brighton created a lot of chances, so did United and the game could have gone either way. Traditionally, the big clubs in England don't adapt their playing style against smaller clubs like Brighton. But when considering how good Deserbi has made Brighton, this might have to change very fast. A way of playing that is so effective as Deserbi's style has been and will always make a change in defensive approaches. 
usually forever. It's happened before, and it will happen again. Nevertheless, Brighton's success does not only come down to tactics and managers. Their recruitment policy is nothing but astonishing. Check out why in this video next.